What is your relationship here? Oh, me? Yeah. I just, I just live here. Ah. That was... That's Flossie's Long time brother. Ago. This is Florence's brother. He's, he's the youngest in the family, right, Flossie? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I used to live here. You used to live in this house? Yeah. You, you were born and raised in this house? My mother was a maid. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, because I, I remember that very well. I lived here. I lived here until I was 22 years old, I think, and I got married and left. What uh, some of your early childhood memories of uh, living in this house? Getting in trouble. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that doesn't seem right. Well, why didn't you let your neighbors know? I never knew when you were in trouble. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, they always try and get me out of bed at 6 o'clock in the morning. I didn't like it. His father. Oh. <laughs> Was this a farm? Yeah. So you had chores to do yeah. first thing in the morning. Sometimes I'd be coming home when the old man's going out to milk. There you go. Oh, you there were, you go. Too big it, was your, it was your nightlife. Yeah, that was, that was killing me. Let's <laughs> see. Then top of that out. Well, now you can catch up on all that sleep you lost. Then. Well, at one time there, for a long time there, uh, for one, uh, for two summers I know them. I finally got the point where I had to be up at six o'clock because I had calves to be fed. I had cows to be fed. They did the milk and I didn't. I had to feed the cows. Feed the calves. They kept me busy. I didn't have much time to travel. So you had chores in the morning. Yeah. Then you went to school. When I went to school, when yeah. You, went to, you didn't go to school very often? You no, know, sometimes the old man kept me home. But it wasn't that much. But, you know, it, uh, because when I got out of school, I quit and worked and stayed on the farm. And that was a mistake. Then the army got me. Where did the oh, army? I didn't know that. But they didn't kill me very long because I got in trouble there too. Oh no. Oh yeah, the three of us. Doing what? Such well, we were sent on, on a patrol. Funny. A white well, other person knows about this. I was trying to say, I've never even really heard about it before. Neither did my wife. Oh. Well, tell us. We won't tell. I don't care. <laughs> And we went on a patrol. The three of us went on a patrol. So I gave her the damn Jeep. The jeep kept quitting on us. Every quarter mile down the road, that stupid thing was shut off. Get out, open the hood, put the windshield back out, open the hood, pound on the carburetor, pound on the fuel pump, then the damn thing would run. So here we go again. Five times that happened. Finally got mad at it. So we decided, oh, let's do something about this. It wasn't my idea, but some of the other guys said, let's shoot the damn thing. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> they let you guys have guns? When they... Yeah, we had a gun. We each had a pistol. Well, they, they were only shooting jeeps. They weren't shooting people. The only thing we did not do was shot all four tires. <laughs> and, and then we left it. Well, it didn't run anyway. Well, you know, tires were hard to come by then. Well, they didn't, after that, they didn't want us in the Army. Oh, I don't blame them. Well, the, uh, they, we gave us a choice. This auto discharge, I'll throw us out. But they gave us an honorable discharge, but we lost our medical. So. Oh. They gave you an honorable discharge? Yeah. Well, good. that's good. And they, we lost our... Oh, that's too bad. 
All the other benefits yeah. you mean. Benefits we had, you know, we lost all that. Where were you stationed? I was in Fort Dix. New Fort Dix. Jersey. New Jersey. New Jersey. Flossie, what are some of your earliest memories in this house growing up? Did you have chores to do too on the farm? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. I probably would... He was probably supposed to take over when I... When I <clears throat> or when he got to a certain age. I used to uh, feed the calves, teach them to drink out of the pail, and I also had to deliver milk, a pail of milk with two quarts in it, to the house over on the corner where the Mrs. Gams lived, and um, to Mrs. Goodwin, who lived on the Music Mountain Road. Priscilla, did you have to work for your uh, keep? Um, oh, yes. Like feeding calves or that sort of stuff? Well, I used to have to go about 8 o'clock and push up hay to the cow, be, or feed or something. I remember because they would eat and then they couldn't reach any further when they were in their stages. So around 8 o'clock at night you went and pushed up so they could eat all of it so that they'd give good milk. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, mean, I remember when we came, <coughs> it was a long time ago, <coughs> someone came up with the idea of putting night lights in the barn and it helps, like chickens, it helps the chickens lay eggs. So we put night lights, a few lights in the barn for night for the cows. Oh, did it work? No, because you know what happened? We used red bulbs. Oh. <laughs> and it switched along that one side of the long part of the barn. Somebody coming down by the cemetery and the place was on fire. Oh. <laughs> I remember that because we were eating supper one night. And not come on to us, said, your barn's on fire. I said, what? You know, the barn wasn't on fire, just as the red lights that were growing. You know. uh -huh. uh, the old man living there that in a hurry. <laughs> I never heard that. We got rid of them red lights in a hurry. You know, getting back to the kind of chores we had to do. Yeah. Things like getting the eggs yeah, oh, that's and thing I feeding the chickens. And you know, in those days, chickens cleaned up all the excess food. Mm -hmm. My mother cooked about the same amount of food every day. There was no way that anybody would ever eat it. So it was sort of split between the dogs. The dogs never had purchased dog food. And so they would get what we ate. And then, if there was more stuff left over, the chickens got it. And anyway, the chickens got a couple kinds of food. They were well fed. They got corn and laying mash. Did you have to grind the corn? You put the corn... Uh, that was one of my jobs. You stick the corn cob in, you grind it, and grind all the dried you corn. You know, the, the corn chopper or grinder uh, it was sort of a plaything. Oh. There was one down in the corn crib, but no, no we never. I had to do that. That was my job. You must have had to save the ears of corn mm -hmm. before it was harvested. Mm -hmm. um, our cows <coughs> got it all chopped up. The ears were chopped up. In the oh, that's spiral. right. Yeah, because it, of ensilage, right, yeah. Jack? Yeah. You called it ensilage. Yeah. Did you? Uh, have to throw down ensilage for the cows? That was my job, night and morning. Before school, after school, days off and days not off. I Three thought days. they only got that once a day. Yeah, no, once a day. They got corn in the morning and grass at night. Oh, vice versa, I don't remember now. Did you have a milking machine? Yeah. See, we didn't. My mother did. She milked her own cows. And I can't remember how many they had. But uh, I rather felt sorry for my mother because my father died when I was nine, and she 
ran the farm and I don't know, there was Gino and Alma and I and then my niece Darla came to live with us. And so I felt sorry for her because she she worked and she died at 58. 58? 58? 58 years old. Six o'clock and I'm getting ready and I go mow because my brother he was doing mail and then uh, when I get done mowing I used to rake. I get done raking and I used to bail it. And then I got done bailing at 3, 3 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and then I had to come home and have milk. Then I had to go back after supper and pick up the hay. That ruined my night. <laughs> Good time I got out of the damn barn was 9 30, 10 o'clock at night until I got it unloaded. We start another day. Next day was the same thing. I did a lot of funny little things. But I finally ended up getting married and I left here. Where'd you go? I went to Canaan. I lived in Canaan. I went to about a place in Canaan. I stayed there. I worked for the town of Canaan, Falls Village. I worked there about seven, six, seven years. And I got sick of that because I got sick of plowing snow on weekends and holidays and Christmas. And, <laughs> and which we did. You had a truck to do the plowing? Yeah. And the mail was delivered by truck? And then I left there and went. And went after I left that, I went delivering candy, cigarettes, soda. What was that? Huh? What was that? I don't know that. Well, I worked for you and a half for him. Wakefield. Oh, Wakefield. Okay, good. And uh, the women down there in Wingdale go me nuts. <laughs> so that's when I quit. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, I quit during the day. I worked there one year, just a little year. You year mean you hadn't finished your day's work yet, but you quit? Well, because George D. was working down there, too. Oh, I didn't know that. And he had to be in Wingdale today, and he gave me a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> the machine broke down. I said, don't reach the machine broke down. You keep your fingers out, it wouldn't break down. <laughs> he pissed me off, so okay. I said, I handed him, hand him all the keys, the bag of nickels, and I handed the keys to his truck. He said, here, you're on your own. <laughs> I walked out, I caught George, I went home with him. Oh. <laughs> Next day I was working up, I was going to teach Kane went to work. Oh. Up to what? Up to, uh, uh, to O'Connor's. O'Connor's. For uh, how many? 37 years, you said? 32 years I worked 32 there. 32 years. Mm -hmm. And I got dead of nature, did a little candy. But it's something like, more I like than anything else. That's why I stayed. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm about the only one to stay there for that length of time. Now you drove a big truck when yeah. you worked for O'Connor's. Yeah, the last three years I worked there, I wasn't even in the yard. Oh. I, I was doing a uh, whole lot of Farmington, New Hartford, Avon, oh. West Hartford, they were back and forth. That's all I did. Flossie, did you ever work outside the house? <coughs> Gardening? Well, we had raspberries that had to be picked every day in the summertime for a couple of, well, they lasted about three or four weeks. But at the same time, well, my mother was always busy making jelly and jam, and I got you know, caught up in that and tried to help her. Just sorting over the raspberries before doing anything with them took a great bit of time. And I can't say that I can't say that I mowed the lawn very many times, but there were times when my sister Peg and I would have to mow the lawn because it would be doing. And of course with a push mower it's pretty different than riding around on a John Deere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I got Did stuck you? with it every week. And, and Peg was considered a 
suitable driver. I guess I was inadequate. <laughs> and the hay had to be removed from the hay wagons when it was loose hay. A big fork would drop from the hay barn. It was a post outside the hay barn. And she would have to drive the truck forward uh, and back. And this could go on for two or three hours unloading uh, the wagons, wagon pulls of hay. the beans when your mother canned the beans? Oh my gosh, the vegetable garden. That had to be weeded constantly. I mean, if you ran out of things to do, <laughs> there was always the garden. Yeah, we, my mother canned beans, corn, carrots, beets, peaches. She used to buy the peaches. Yeah, because we didn't have a peach tree. But she had her own pear tree. We had pears. And then, of course, at the end of the season, there were always there was always what, about an acre of potatoes. I remember digging potatoes. I remember that. Did you have a potato bin in your cellar? We had a potato bin that was about half the size of this one, about a quarter the size of this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the potatoes lasted all winter. And then in the spring, they had what was left, which had to be carried out. And you used the potatoes for next year's crop. You used the eyes in the potatoes <laughs> for next year's Sometimes, crop. Sometimes, or, yeah. I, knew or you I, bought, I yeah. think my father would buy new seed oh, potatoes uh -huh. every year. And then that was a chore, too, because you wouldn't plant a whole potato. As Priscilla said, you'd uh, cut them into sections and plant an eye. Probably, I don't know how many eyes there were in a potato, yeah. but three or four. So that was kind of, kind of a job, <laughs> getting ready to do We that. don't know what work is. And we think we've forgotten, actually. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you get to throw the ice from the ice house using a big pair of tongs? Yeah. To drop it out of the second floor door into the big barrel of water? Yeah. Well, that's to keep your milk cool, you're talking about? Yeah, before we had an electric cooler. Uh, cooler, yeah. Milk cooler. Where did the ice come from? The ice came from the ponds around here. Cutting ice was a big deal, and there was a spring. Um, well, it was part way up the Music Mountain Road, which fed a pond, which was over that away, <laughs> uh -huh. back of Dean's and corner of, of Dean's property and the Chapman property. Did you know about that? Um, no, that one I don't know, but there was one down the laneway and off to the right that was Bill Page's pond, and I think yeah. that's where we got ice from. But cutting ice was a big project. And then you store it in uh, sawdust, keep it cool all summer long. It would stay 
Oh, Frozen yeah. off yeah. summer. Yeah. You know, the, awesome. ice, the ice house in the barnyard is gone, of course. Long since gone. But it has the ice house had double walls that were filled with sawdust. And then every layer of ice that was put in was covered with a, a four or five or six or so. I don't know, quite a bit of sawdust. So filling the ice house was a big operation. What did you do for fun back in those days? Not a heck of a lot. Well, I know what we... We lived in the kitchen at night. Did you live in the kitchen after your meal time or did you come into the living room? Yeah. Because we used to... We had a big, big table and we used to play cards or, or we set up a net and used it as a ping pong table or we used to have a gramophone or something fancy that you could make the music and, and it had these uh, cardboard uh, sections with numbers on them that uh, they were card well sort of like a, a hard stiff cardboard and uh, Alma made them cut them all up and made a pack of flinch cards. Now, I don't know how many flinch cards there are in a pack. What is what is that? I what, can't what? remember. It's a card game you oh, play. Oh, card game. I, I don't know that I ever knew how to play it. But, yeah, so she cut all those things up and, and that. But, uh, well, we used to play cards or read. Yeah. Or stoke the fire. <laughs> well, you know, back then, if if something happened to you, you had to make do then with what you had. And like nobody would go take you to South Canaan to buy anything, you know. And it's like that was just beyond you because money was scarce as hands teeth. This was during the Depression? Uh, yeah. yeah. This was during the yeah. Depression. Well, somewhat. Yeah. Well, you know, if you grew up on the farm, you didn't really suffer from the depression as no. people who worked in factories and shops and businesses because you had all the food that you could possibly eat. You didn't have any money, but you know, you had plenty to eat. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you felt sorry for the people who didn't have a farm. But most people around here had farms. So, yeah. there were 41 farms in Falls Village. I have the, the esteemed first students of a one-room schoolhouse <laughs> on Route 63. Um, do they have a name for it, that schoolhouse? Huntsville School. 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 Huntsville School. I should know that. Yeah. Uh, and we just came out. So in what year were you there in the Huntsville one-room schoolhouse? 36 through 38, would you say, Priscilla? Yeah, something like that. 36? Maybe 36 through I think it closed in the seven. middle of 1938 school year. Okay, let's keep walking over here. Um, so, and then where did you go in 1938? We had to figure out how to get to the... DM Hunt. DM Hunt School. Did you have buses? No. No buses. 
Um, did you I, I went in Mr. Hanlon's old Hudson car, <laughs> which had a little jump seat in it. Really? So that yeah. must have been Hello, a lot of fun. Mr. Hey, Mark. Uh, the, the car was big old boxy thing, and it held almost all the kids in the neighborhood. <laughs> I think so. Really? So what, did he go around picking up everybody? Uh-huh. Did he? Oh. Well, I walked to school. Okay. Did you walk to school too, Flossie? Oh, absolutely. I think so. Home for lunch. Oh, well, no, not when we went to... Uh, oh, to the, oh, not we when we went to uh, DM Hunt. Oh. You didn't buy lunch boxes, though, did you? Did yeah. You, you did? One, yeah, one drinking bucket and one, um, what do you call it, ladle. Okay. <coughs> you had one what? Ladle to ladle of water out of the bucket. <laughs> oh, a bucket of water. Huh. Well, there, you know, there was always a big stone jug. Uh -huh. Water jug, and we didn't have paper towels. Of course not. So we had to take a piece of uh, probably drawing paper and make a hat. Let's try it.